we were up against it with them, but we were going to win anyway. And we did. We led the way with superb kills on day one against enemy aircraft on the 1st of May, and then deterred the enemy from approaching the amphibious landing as much as we could. But when we got into close combat, we always won. After that raid, we went back up on top again, and we could see out in the bay, out in Falkland Sound, the HMS Ardent was burning, and we saw HMS Antelope come back into the bay with a hole through a side, where the bomb had skipped off the water and gone into the ship. And sadly, she blew up later on when Jim Prescott went to defuse the bomb. We really felt for the Navy guys, actually. On Intrepid, they were saying, oh, we wouldn't fancy you lot going ashore and all the rest of it. And we said, we don't want to stuck here in this tin can, you know? <laughs> The shore is where we feel safe, you know. It didn't feel like we were winning at that point. When the ship got hit, it was just a thud. That's all we heard. The Exocet impacted and dropped down. It caused total devastation. When we went round to the port side, there was a big hole on the deck in front of the hangar. The hangar got taken out. The smoke everywhere, they'd shut the engines down. You just did what you was told at that time, fires and to try and save life. I stayed pretty close to the water. We, we dug in, got ready that afternoon and the next few days, the bombing began. I remember Argentine A4 Skyhawk planes diving down towards our anchored ships and then everyone on the ships firing at them. There was a French 155 gun, medium artillery, firing at us. And every 30 seconds there was the most horrendous noise as a shell came towards us and then happily over us. As we were unloading ammunition, it, it did um, scare the wits out of us really. It was a feeling of relief when we first landed. And then I suppose a certain amount of shock when it all did happen, because no one had been bombed like that since 1945. We're all laid there on the ground. The Sergeant Major went along in the dark very quietly. He said, if you want to have a word with the man upstairs, do it now, because some of us might not have another chance. He says, I'm going to. And then the word came down the line, fix bayonets. And we all just got to our knee and just fixed bayonets, stand up, forward, and we started walking forward into the minefield. <laughs>